Alright, so this is a reading from the book of the 70s Big LP, and this is in the third chapter, which is called Helpful Info, and this is basically trying to uh, let the reader know that they can tweak, take this program and they can tweak it to various goals. So, <clears throat> this is the section. Juggling goals, from page 42 of 53. This programming template, template can be good for a few things. First, it's a different kind of linear progression that will not only yield total body strength, but develop a lagging upper body so that you're not a fucking goon. It's po doesn't say that in there. It's possible some beginners will choose this program to eliminate, eliminate the big leg small arms problem, which is the goon thing. Consistency is very important for developing strength and muscularity. If you're someone who is not consistent with training, eating, or recovery, then address the issue now, time now. Remember, if you're willing to spend 10 hours in the gym a week, then you might as well make your time worth it. Make it look like you actually do. Uh, so squatting twice a week, benching and pressing each once a week, doing pull-ups and chin-ups each once a week, and deadlifting and rowing once a week, and adding some isolation work in the arms consistently, consistently for the next 50 weeks is more important than pushing your 1RM or top sets in the next two months. By training consistently, you will get stronger by developing a balanced foundation of muscle. Consistency and slow progression are more important for guys who wish they were bigger which is all of us. Let's discuss the differences in goals and how to use this program to achieve them. Goal number one, I want bigger arms. I don't know why I flex my lats for that, but this is the easiest goal to program for because this trainee understands he needs to get stronger, but won't get upset if his lifts don't increase every single week, though they should for a while. The fact that he's performing the upper body pulling exercises, as described earlier in this book, on top of a systemic compound strength program, which is this program, means he'll start to develop his arms. It's okay if the squat and deadlift are not pushed incredibly hard, but keep them in the program, if you, even if you don't care about them, if all you care about is your arms, to apply that systemic stress. Goal number two, I want bigger, better, insert body part here. Why stop at arm training? If you want a bigger back or better calves, glutes, or shoulders, you can easily sub isolation work for those related muscles in the same spot the arm training is in the program. Male or female, who cares? This is your program and your goals. No one is telling you, to, mandating that you follow this thing. This, you tweak it for you. That was all ad-libbed right there. The criteria are stick to, to exercise and don't interfere with recovery with big lifts. So you'll know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about if you read the book. I want to increase my bench and press. This trainee will need to carefully tweak his rep ranges in the bench and press, as discussed in chapter two of the program, to hit new PRs. So there's, in this book, there are set rep schemes that are different and that aren't used in other programs that will facilitate that progression. Consistently hitting the auxiliary work, like rows and chin-ups and pull-ups, should provide a boost on the presses, but will require a couple of months to show. It's not like you're just gonna get bigger right away. Initially focus on the extra upper body pulling work as it will pay off in the long run. So it's kind of like make sure you're doing that shit because if you haven't been doing that in your program that's key to getting bigger and then uh, not just getting bigger but getting stronger in the upper body to uh, rotate in and affect the bench and the press. Uh, goal number four, I want to get stronger in everything. Most sensible goal of them all. If the training is brand new to lifting they will easily make progress on everything. The farther along the progression they are, the closer they will have to tweak the set and rep ranges to accommodate progress. It's possible to strengthen all these lifts. I was an intermediate lifter using this template and PR'd on pull-ups, 21 body weight pull-ups, and 90 pounds weighted for 300 total pounds hanging from the bar. Uh, bench, bench 350, pressed 240, and deadlifted 500. Consistently using this program allowed me to push my lifts up and balance out my numbers with the Olympic lifts when I modified the program to incorporate the Olympic lifts. So I had a 300 push press, 300 pounds, 360, 300 kilo push press would be fucking sick. 365 uh, pound clean and jerk and 285 pound snatch. I had to speak in terms of pounds for the, for the lay people in this book. Uh, both, most lifters need to fix imbalances in musculature to get stronger overall. And my point in saying that is that in this program, it does that in the upper body and the lower body because the RDLs are involved in the lower body. This is why this program includes so many upper body compound exercises. They are vital to balancing out strength and musculature. This is by uh, Bill Clinton Thumb. Since the hamstrings are a common deficiency in the lower body, RDLs were added to address it. And the second most common deficiency concerns the glutes. So lifters can add specific work to the program on Friday if necessary. So I hope you enjoyed this reading from the book of the 70s Big LP.